Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 70 in our incredible new tutorial series for you're teaching your Raspberry Pi who's boss. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the SunFounder Raphael kit for Raspberry Pi. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't take a look down in the description, there is a link over to Amazon and you can hop on over there and pick up your kit. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you is how to use the proximity sensor from your Raphael kit to detect whether your Raspberry Pi is coming in close proximity with something. Now, where would a function like that be useful? Well, it would be useful if you had the Raspberry Pi on something like a little robot car and you want to make sure that the robot car does not run into something. Maybe you think the field should be clear, the field of view should be clear, but if the robot is about to run into something, whether it's a person, a cat, or a wall, you will be identified and then the robot could take appropriate action so as to avoid a collision. So we're talking about using an IR proximity sensor for collision avoidance. Now everybody's robot and everybody's application is going to be different so I'm going to show you just how to wire up and use the sensor and then you'll have to deploy it in your own particular field of interest. Does that sound good? I sure hope it does. So let's start talking a little bit about this proximity sensor. You can see up here, I have it already hooked up and ready to go. And then I will also get out of your way here. And then what we will do is we will talk a little bit about this sensor. This is what it looks like, and so it's pretty easy to find in your old Raphael kit. And I'll start by kind of telling you how this thing works. It has two key parts to it. This is an uh, this is an infrared LED, and then this is an infrared detector. Okay, what is infrared? It is just light. Okay, like imagine when you turn on the light, you're sending out photons, and you can see those photons because those photons are in the visible spectrum, and the visible spectrum grows from ultraviolet down to red, okay? And if you go higher frequency than ultraviolet, you're not going to be able to see it. I mean, if you go higher frequency than violet, as you go towards ultraviolet, you get into things that you can't see. And then on the low end, you can see red. And as you go to, to, uh, to uh, longer wavelengths, uh, and shorter free, longer wavelengths and shorter frequencies, then you go into the infrared and you cannot see it. Now, how does this wavelength and uh, frequency business work? Well, it's very simple. The longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency. So a large wavelength means a small frequency. A small wavelength means a large frequency. So when we're up in the violet spectrum, we're at a high frequency and a very short wavelength. When we come down to infrared, we go to a long wavelength and then we have a short frequency or a low frequency and hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> so we can get down and we can see into the reds. I've got a little bit of a rainstorm going out there. So if you hear a little pitter patter of the rain on the roof and a little th thunder, do not be dismayed. It is just a little bit of a storm passing through. I don't know. Let's see if we can even see the storm here. Getting to be a pretty, pretty nice little rain there. Yeah, you can see the fishermen have kind of cleared out or in the process of clearing out already. But I digress. Let's get back over here and let's talk about this. So this is the infrared <clears throat> LED. This puts out 
infrared photons. You cannot see those photons, but you can think of it as invisible light. And then this is the infrared detector. Well, how does this work? It sends out a beam of infrared light. That beam will run into an obst obstacle, reflect off of it, and be detected here. And so as you start getting close to an object, as it is shining that beam out, that beam will bounce off and come back and be detected. And when it's detected, you have a signal that says that you are in the proximity of something. Now, how far of a proximity can you detect? Well, this particular device I'm finding for most objects, it detects something, an object that is about three or four inches away. But that depends on several factors. It depends, first of all, on how large the object is. If you're coming up on a wall, all of that light that you're sending out, all of that infrared light that you're sending out is bouncing back. And so it's easier to see the reflection. So you'll see something like a wall further off. <coughs> then you will see something that is small. So if you were looking at something like a small screwdriver, you're not going to see that at three inches away because less of the light is bouncing back and therefore you've got to get really close before you see it. So size of the target is one important thing. The other important thing is the color of the target. And so if you're looking at a white wall, it's big and it is reflecting all almost all of those photons back you're very likely to see it you might see it at five or six or seven inches but if you are looking at something that is black black is absorbing those photons and you're going to have to get much closer it's absorbing most of those photons you're going to have to get much closer before you can see a reflected signal so color of the object matters and the size of the object matters but you've got the the illuminator and you've got the detector okay so how do we hook this thing up let's switch over and i will show you that this is the schematic that i am using to hook this thing up and it's really pretty easy i'm going to get out of your way a little bit more here it's pretty easy to hook this thing up what you can see is i've got 3.3 volts i'm creating a 3.3 volt rail and a 3.3 volt rail here and then i'm creating a ground rail down here and it looks like these might be reversed of how i would normally do it but basically you create a 3.3 volt rail you create a ground rail and then you have three pins that you have to hook up vcc you hook to the 3.3 volt the 3.3 volt rail ground you hook to the ground rail okay and now you have an output pin and that you connect to one of your gpio pins and you can see that i have it hooked up to gpio pin 17. so back here you can see it in the schematic and then here you can kind of see it in real life how i did that okay so we are hooked up let's come over here and let's see how to code this thing up and it's really pretty it is really pretty darn easy to get this thing coded up so let's jump in and let me make sure that I've got this in a position where you can see it easily okay I think that looks pretty good and so in order to do this what we are going to need to do is let me make sure yeah okay uh, what we're gonna need to do is we're using the GPIO pin so I'm gonna need to import our, I'm going to need to import rpi.gpio as gpio. Then I need to import time because I'll probably want to put a little bit of a delay in there. Now I need to set the mode of my pinout. So I'm going to say gpio.setMode. And what are we going to do? gpio.bcm, meaning we will be using the BCM numbering scheme. Why? Because we're using this little uh, breakout board from the SunFounder kit and it is labeled in the BCM numbering scheme. So if we use BCM, we can read the labels right off of the little uh, breakout board and that makes life a little bit easier. Okay, so now I'm going to set what is my prox pin? What is the pin that I use? My prox pin was pin 17. 
and then I'm going to do a gpio.setup for that pin, which pin, my prox pin, and what, I, what do I want to do? I want to make it a gpio.input, so I'll put gpio.in, meaning I'm going to be reading from that pin, and then I need to activate the pull-up resistor, so I'm going to say pull up down, like that pull up down, is equal to gpio all uppercase dot pull up down pud underscore we want it to be up and make sure that you get your case right in all of this because the case really does matter if this is going to work right okay let's run that just make sure i haven't made any silly mistakes so far okay that looks good oh what is that Imp oh i misspelled import speaking of silly mistakes let's run it again that's why i like to run these things get the silly nonsense out of the way before the pro the program gets too complicated Okay, let's keep going. And so what I will do is I will come in now. And remember, we like to clean up our GPIO pins when we exit. So we're gonna do a try. <clears throat> and then inside the try, try, I'm gonna do a while true. When is true true? True is always true. Then I'm just gonna put a pass here as a placeholder. And then what I'm gonna do is say accept. And so this means when I do a keyboard interrupt, it's gonna come down to this accept. So as long as it's running, it stays in the try, it stays in the while true. But then when I hit a keyboard interrupt, it's gonna come down here. And then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna clean up my GPIO pins. So I'm gonna say GPIO.clean up like that. And then I'm gonna say print, and I'm gonna print GPIO good to go just showing me that I've cleaned up my GPIO pins all right that looks pretty good let's run that and see okay that is running that looks good and now to clean up my GPIO pins I'm going to do a control C and I got the message GPIO good to go that means it released the GPIO pin so when I come in and run it again I don't get a pesky error message and so that's good now we're ready to come in and kind of put the beef in the program here and so what I'm going to do is I am going to read from that output pin so I'm just going to say uh, I'm going to say but state for the button state not no, that's not a button I'm going to say uh, prox state is equal to gpio dot input and what do I want to look at? The prox pin. So I'm going to read from the prox pin. And then what I'm going to print is I'm going to print that prox state. And I don't like it to scroll. I don't like it to scroll. So I'm going to print in such a way that it just overwrites. And so I'm going to print prox state. And the way you do that is you say end equal. And then you put the backslash. I don't know, is that a backslash? I think that's a backslash. But anyway, the one that goes in the direction shown is the one for me that's over the enter key. And then I'm gonna put an R, end that character, and then end that print. And then I'm gonna do a time.sleep of point 0.1. All right, now I have to warn you that these things operate a little bit backwards. When there's nothing there, it says a one. And then when there is something there, it says a zero. And so we could think of all clear as a one. So are, it tells you, are you all, cl all clear? Yes, one. Are you all clear? No, zero. Kind of like that. That's the way I like to think about it. So let's come in. Hold your breath, please. Okay, it is running there, and you can see right here that I am getting a one, meaning that there is nothing there. Now, if I come in and put my hand about a three inches away, shazam, look at that, I get a zero, I take it away, I get a one, I get a zero. Now, let's see, it detects my hand at about, I would say about three to four inches. Okay, it sees it very easy, and then as I get to about three or four inches, it doesn't see it. But what was this I was saying about white things it might see further? So let me try something that's much whiter than my hand, and I can bring it up, and that gets more like about five inches it can still see it. I guess that's, I'm kind of getting out of your field of view, but getting up to about five to about five inches it's still seeing it and then let's try something that's very dark like this uh, but like this mouse I put this over it and you can see that uh, let's see 
that's having to get a little closer than my hand, about two inches to be able to see this mouse. Why? Because it's black. And similarly, like I say, big white things you, you could see further away than small white things. The best is big white things. The worst would be small black things as far as what you would be able to see easily or not. So a couple of words about this. You can see that it is pretty easy. It would be suitable for something like a little robot car that you didn't want to run into the wall or run into some little figure on your scene that you're driving the car around in but you can see a proximity sensor like this would not be suitable for a backup car for your truck to make sure that you're not going to run into a little kid but there are better proximity sensors that are bigger and longer range and more powerful but they operate just the same as this okay the other thing that i will say a couple more things i will say about this and that is there is a sensitivity setting here and what you can see it is it is a potentiometer and as you turn it clockwise it becomes more sensitive and as you turn it counterclockwise it becomes less sensitive so as you turn it clockwise you're able to see things at a little bit further distance away but you're also more likely to get a false positive that maybe it would just pick up some ambient infrared light in the room and then also if you turn it too far to the left then it's just going to have trouble seeing it because you've turned the sensitivity down so right is more sensitive left is is less sensitive but you got to play with it a little bit and you've got to be really careful with this potentiometer because it's very easy to go all the way to the left and try to go a little bit further and then break it or all the way to the right and go a little bit further and break it and you've just got to really feel for that stop because it's not a very strong stop tactile feel and so it's very easy to go too far to the right or too far to the left and so if you want to be safe don't fool with it but if you do fool with it and want to play with the sensitivity just be really careful okay guys so that is a cool little gizmo that you can use when you are doing your robotics work and you can use it for collision avoidance and uh, uh, running into things and it's a pretty neat little feature okay guys this is your homework for next week what your homework is is to build this circuit and then connect it to your RGB LED if you are not in the proximity of something the LED should be green when you do come into proximity with an object you get a red warning light so red warning you're getting near something green means you are all clear now you can't do a yellow in between because this is not a varying it's just either it's proximate or it's not proximate there's not a you're getting close it's either it's there or it's not okay guys i hope you're having as much fun taking this class as i am making it if you enjoyed the video be sure to give us a thumbs up it helps us with the old youtube juice if you'll leave us a comment down below and if you have not already please subscribe to the channel and when you do ring that bell so you'll get notifications when future lessons drop and most importantly share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos paul mcquarter with toptechboy.com i will talk to you guys later